I hope to use it in business in the future. I'm also half Chinese. I was told it was going to be the next great language in the world. Well, China's currently a growing power, and you know I want to connect with my roots a bit more. So why not Chinese, right? Um, and I've always been really interested in China and wanted to travel there. And Get a media job in China. Studying about China and its relations with the, with the U.S. and Korea. Because I like Chinese literature, classical poetry, history. Um, it makes me feel more whole, more equal, um, and also it's really fun. There's a meaning behind, you know, the language that's really cool because I think that not a lot of languages have that. And I think I'm a junior in the college studying Chinese and linguistics. Um, a little bit about me, I'm studying Chinese because I was born in China. Um, I was born in Jiangsu, Changzhou, but when I was 11 months old I was adopted to the United States by my mom. And so I spent um, all of my life in the United States, grew up here. Um, but when I was a junior in high school, I had an opportunity to go back to China for the first time. And I went and it was an amazing experience. I went with about 30 other uh, adoptees from China and we had the opportunity to go to Beijing and meet a lot of um, the officials at the China Center for Adoption Affairs as well as visit a lot of historical sites like the Temple of Heaven, the Forbidden City, and really reconnect with our cultural heritage. So when I came to college, I decided I wanted to be a Chinese major in order to learn the language that I never got the chance to learn growing up. This year, I'm enrolled in a fourth level class with Ren Lao Shi. It's called Topics in Current Affairs. And the class is mainly structured around economics or government. I'm also taking a class with Professor Kafalas called East Asia Text and Context. It's actually a requirement for all Chinese majors at Georgetown. We read um, religious texts, so texts that are about Taoism or Buddhism, Confucianism, such as the Analects, uh, the Tao Te Ching, uh, the Zhuangzi. And additionally, most of the work in the class is done in a discussion format. We all prepare the readings before coming to class and we we mainly sit in, in a circle and discuss, which makes it a very different kind of English class. However, we also sometimes break up into smaller groups in order to delve more deeply into the themes of a particular work. And then within these small groups, we um, prepare a short um, explanation for the class. Although I didn't have an opportunity to start studying Chinese until I came to college, um, I've always had kind of a sort of a hidden passion for China ever since elementary school. Um, I had a friend that moved to my town from Shanghai um, when I was in sixth grade. And he was the first Chinese person I ever met. Um, my town had very little diversity, and he really sparked my interest in China. And uh, coming to Georgetown, I finally had an opportunity at a really international focused school to start studying Chinese. So I'm currently studying second level Chinese and since this is still considered a high beginner level, um, the classroom, although while it's focused around different topics, um, we still spend um, a significant amount of time on reviewing basic grammar concepts and new vocabulary words just to augment our vocabulary. 
Um, we do various things such as dictation, uh, which involves uh, our teacher reading sections of the text out loud and not just rote copying it down. Um, and also we do a lot of um, her, uh, the teacher says and we repeat it um, just to reinforce um, essentially Chinese uh, grammar sentence structure and just getting used to using new words. Uh, uh, I feel that the style of classroom instruction is extremely useful um, since it's really key to reinforce um, the basic sentence structure um, to really be used later on to make more complicated sentences. Bye-bye. <laughs> Learning Chinese is a lot of fun, but I can't say that it hasn't been difficult. Um, actually, I think Chinese has been one of the hardest things I've ever done, but it has been a very rewarding experience. Um, one of the hardest things for me is reading the newspaper, whether um, in paper form or online. Sometimes when I'm reading, I see words that I am, like new vocabulary words that I've never encountered before, or grammar patterns that are more formal than the ones I've been taught in class. And this is very difficult, especially when I'm reading in paper form, because unlike the internet, I can't just use my computer to look up the words. So I have to use a lot of context to try to figure out the meaning. Also, sometimes when I'm reading online, I see a lot of internet slang, so words that wouldn't actually be used in a formal newspaper in print form, but especially if you're reading like a blog or you're using um, an online social media site like QQ or Renrun, sometimes people would use phrases that are really popular um, for the time, but they're not um, actually able to be looked up in a dictionary, so sometimes I have to do a lot of guesswork with that, and that can be very challenging. Another challenging thing, especially with schoolwork, is remembering the material that we learn. Oftentimes we have dictations first thing in, um, when we get to class, so in order to prepare for dictations, um, it's in our favor to know the material, know the, the lesson text as, as best we can. So. I actually type all of the lesson texts that uh, Ren Lausher sends us um, in PDF form. I will s sit down for an hour or so and just type out, type out the text so that I can um, highlight the words that I find particularly difficult. I can go back and type in the, the pain in case I don't remember the pronunciation. I also like to, um, sometimes I can copy all of the words that I thought were particularly difficult um, into a separate document and I can also take notes um, on the lesson text during class which is very helpful. Sometimes there will be cheng yu or other f special phrases that cannot be found in a dictionary and Rin Lausher will explain them during class so it's very helpful to have it in w a word document so that I can type her explanation of the, of the phrase as well as take down any other notes like um, examples using particular grammar structures or vocabulary. Even though I was adopted, growing up, my mom always emphasized um, my Chinese heritage and would try to find ways for me to be able to encounter it um, throughout my growing up years. So we would attend spring festival events as well as mid-autumn festival events. Um, I ate mooncake growing up and we would try to go to Chinese restaurants and um, find opportunities for me to meet um, students who were studying abroad here in America from China. And one of the major ways that my mom tried to help me stay connected with my Chinese roots was um, during the Spring Festival for the New Year's, my mom always gave me um, the red envelope or hong bao. And she actually still does this even to this day. Um, I'm away at college, but um, every year she still mails me a package that includes um, the red envelope. And so this is from this year, 2013, uh, the year of the snake. And it's, it's actually very, um, very sweet of her to try to um, 
even in the little things to help me feel connected to my cultural roots. Um, so in addition to spending a lot of time every day in class studying Chinese, I also do a lot of activities outside of class. Um, every day I spend one to, one to three hours typically um, preparing for the next class, especially over the weekend. I spend a lot of time just, just uh, rote writing characters um, just to reinforce um, the new vocabulary words before each week's dictation quiz. Um, since coming to Georgetown, I got really involved in the Chinese community. Um, in addition to taking Chinese class, I also, I also do lots of extracurriculars that involve um, the Chinese community. For example, um, during Spring Festival, the Georgetown University graduate students um, having an organization um, for Chinese students and Chinese culture, and they held a gala um, and the Spring Festival that I attended, and I got to see lots of different um, Chinese dance instruments, singing, and jokes. <laughs> also, I'm a member of the undergraduate Georgetown uh, Chinese Students Alliance. Um, we also held a ball um, in celebration of a spring festival, and it was really cool because all of the girls wore their cheap house, which is a Mandarin-style dress. Um, additionally, our school holds, or the undergraduate population is having a festival to celebrate Asian culture called Asia Fest. Um, I'm going to be singing a song in Chinese by Wang Li Hong. Um, it's called Pira Aini, and it means still in love with you. Um, in addition, I have a Chinese girlfriend, so we do spend a lot of time actually conversing in Chinese, and that's definitely helping to improve my Chinese um, oral and speaking skills. Uh, so we've gotten to my room. Um, I'm actually living in the GLC, which is the Global Living Community. It's a community of about uh, 22 students here at Georgetown, uh, and it allows for meaningful interaction between American and interna international students. Recently, I was given the opportunity to be the MC in the Chinese New Year Gala performance in Atlanta after a friend that I met through an internship this past summer recommended me to the planning committee for the event because of my fluency in Chinese. I think it's, it's going to be a really great opportunity for me to put myself out there in the Chinese community in Atlanta and to meet new people and of course to contribute to the success of this event. Um, actually, just recently, uh, a few days ago, I got the script that I'm going to have to go through and, and memorize. Um, so I'm a bit nervous, but I think that if I do the necessary preparation, it should work out well. And actually, this afternoon, um, I'm going to be talking with the other MC who will be working with me. Um, I'm going to talk with him over at the phone, and uh, we're going to basically go through the script and practice our lines and coordinate so that it works out well. I have the document right up here on the screen, so if you're interested to see. This is um, what we're going to be reading off of. Oh, sorry, what we're going to be memorizing. And uh, the person I'll be working with, his name is Mr. Moore, and this is going to be his line, for example. And then this Chinese character means zhong, which is like everybody. So everybody together is going to say um, this part here. So that's just one example. And then uh, this means mei nan, which means uh, like handsome man, and mei is like beautiful woman. So the, the, you know, in a lot of Chinese performances, you'll have you know the one 
man and one one male and one female MC on the stage working together, and so these are the two people there. And in addition, um, it, it, this this isn't actually the the entire script because uh, we're going to add in some English here for the English speaking part of the audience and. I think it's basically, I ha we haven't decided exactly what, what it's going to consist of, but it's probably going to mainly be um, a sort of semi-translation of the Chinese, so that English speakers can understand. The <laughs> Yo 现在我们用热烈的掌声来邀请艺术团的节目主持人中国铁路文工团国家一级演员纪立小组小姐能不能把他的嘴卡掉<笑><笑><笑> I'm going to intern in Beijing this summer and I just wanted to prepare myself a little bit to not be totally lost when I get there even though I will speak English most of the time, but I'm interested in um, learning Chinese for the future. I'm very happy to be learning with Dixon, especially like like private lessons. Um, gives us a lot of flexibility, so um, I focus on what I need for like a, the short term that I'm going to learn Chinese for. Um, and I like private lessons with Dixon, they're fun and um, it's hard though, and I'm trying my best, but it's going to be hard. Okay, well, I'm going to go to the park. And then park goes? So, it would be at the very end. I, right now, want to go to the park. Mm hmm Yeah. I'm currently teaching Chinese to a friend of mine, Juliana. One of the things that she's had trouble with is pronunciation. We, we've shared several laughs about uh, tones, because in Chinese, uh, as you may know, there are four tones. And so, uh, if you use the wrong tone when you're speaking, you may say something completely different. And sometimes she's actually uh, inadvertently said some inappropriate things completely, you know, without, uh, not on purpose. And so that's been kind of funny at times, and we've joked about it. You can say, it's, it's like, this has a very broad... Yeah, very general. You Yeah, 我的中文的学习很有帮助
他你你你多长时间学中文？啊，五年六个月，就是我我只学了三年。嗯，这也是我第五年。嗯，我非常喜欢书法。书法家、书法家、专家，从人民大学来，乔治城大学，对，然后他们也带了他们学生的书法，对，特别是漂亮，非常棒。但是世界。